Little history of bartending. The history of bartending dates back to ancient times and can be found in Roman, Greek, and even Asian societies. Public drinking houses, as they were called in those times, now called pubs in England, served as a place for people to socialize. Asia 4 BC era Sura is a strong distilled alcoholic beverage. It is referred to as an anesthetic by Sushrata, a surgeon in India, around 4 BCE, before the advent of surgical operation. Other ancient medical authorities also mention it. Sharaka referred to making a woman with a miscarriage administering alcoholic drinks like Sura, Sidhu, Arishta, Madhu, Madeira or Asava. Bartending began as a trade thousands of years ago. Historical accounts from the time of Julius Caesar show that in situated show that in situated along the major transportations routes served wine and provisions to travelers. The Brazen Head is Dublin's oldest pub. They claim it goes back to 1198, but historians say the earliest mention of their license to sell booze is 1668. Before the 15th century, the majority of bartenders were alehouse owners and female innkeepers who brewed and produced their own liquor. In Western European regions such as England, Ireland, France, and Germany, taverns were the heart of the social world for many professionals from investors to poets. Bartenders and bar owners were considered members of the economic and social elite. They owned property and were recognized as part of one of the wealthiest trades of all time. This social status of bartending was then passed on to the New World. License allowing Stephen Reed to operate a public house and sell liquor, 1786. Most early taverns and public houses in western Pennsylvania were located along the region's sparse major roadways. This house was located on the Great Road to Fort Pitt at Nine Mile Run in Mount Pleasant Township, Westmoreland County. At the time, Pittsburgh itself had a little more than 1.500 people. Pre-Prohibition 1830, the bartending profession traveled over to the New World from Western Europe. The Pioneer Inn and Tavern Lass was passed by the United States Congress in 1832, allowing inns and saloons to serve alcohol to patriots not leasing a room. In the late 19th and early 20th century, bars went from being seedy spots. Bartenders began dressing up to work and following set recipes. Jerry Thomas, October 30, 1830 to December 15, 1885, Jeremiah, Jerry, P. Thomas was an American bartender originally from Sackett's Harbor, who owned and operated saloons in New York City. Because of his pioneering work in popularizing cocktails across the United States as well, he is considered the father of American mixology. As such, he was often nicknamed Professor Jerry Thomas. Black bartenders 1890, prohibited from going into white saloons, founded the exclusive Colored Mixologists Club 1898. Black bartending in white salons remained uncommon. In 1893, a black waiter was promoted to bartender at the Atlas Hotel in Cincinnati. The decision caused fury among the bar's white clientele, who boycotted the hotel. Louis Deck, black waiter, was eventually fired and the hotel shut down. Woman bartender 1895, women, meanwhile, barely worked as bartenders. A rudimentary census in 1895 found just 147 women working as bartenders, compared to nearly 56,000 men. Prohibition 1919. In 1919, mostly under pressure from the temperance movement and its political allies, the United States ratified the 18th Amendment in which the manufacture, transportation and sale of alcohol was prohibited. This put a temporary halt to the bartending profession. After the rise of the cocktail in the early 20th century, Americans were faced with prohibition laws from the federal government. However, bartending culture remained alive throughout Prohibition. Working in underground speakeasies, bartenders continued to provide their patrons with delicious cocktails. In fact familiar cocktails, such as the gin and tonic were invented during the Prohibition era. Prohibition in the United States made the bartending culture stronger than ever before in history and gave bartenders an aura of mystery and power. 
Gangsters in the mob owned social clubs and bartenders were well paid for supplying them with the illegal substance of alcohol. The bartenders from the Prohibition period are credited with creating some of the most famous cocktails that we know today such as Long Island iced tea, the highball and gin and tonic and many more. Job opportunities for bartenders became so scarce during Prohibition that thousands of bartenders fled to Cuba. Americans inhabited many of the 7,000 Cuban bars, according to Difford's guide. The amount of Americans emigrating to Cuba rose from 33,000 in 1914 to 90,000 in 1928. Many Cuban bartenders grew frustrated at the Americanization of Havana's night scene, and formed the Cantoneros Club to reclaim their institutions. End of Prohibition was in 1933, when a majority of states ratified the 21st Amendment to repeal Prohibition in 1933, bartenders were able to go back to work. In the World War II 1939-1945, because men headed overseas to fight in World War II, women picked up shifts. Women worked these shifts in part because they were the only jobs available to them at that time. In the late 40s, however, women lost their jobs after men came back from the war. Some states passed laws barring women from the profession altogether. Some of that is really just about men wanting to be able to take their jobs back, but some of it is anxiety over the breakdown of the family and women becoming too masculine and losing their values, Christine Sismondo in her book. While California still had a law barring women from pouring alcohol in 1971, the mid-1970s saw an increase in the number of women behind the bar. The Wall Street Journal suspects the change occurred after a Holiday Inn chain discovered bar revenues went up up when women did the mixing. In the 1980s bartenders, led by King Cocktail, Dale DeGroff, began a revolution to bring American pubs. DeGroff began mixing, historically inspired, cocktails at the Rainbow Room in New York City. The Rainbow Room's guests included Tony Bennett and Rosemary Clooney. The bartender says before 80s bartenders would use soda guns and packages of sour mix to make drinks. His work helped restore, proper, though fully classic drinks, to American bars. DeGroff has since won two James Beard Awards and founded the Museum of the American Cocktail in New Orleans. Flair bartending is thought to have emanated out of TGI Friday's company, specifically at their establishment in Los Angeles with a man called John Bandy. As the story goes, John Bandy was awfully bored at some point in the 80s and was tired of the same old meat and greet with the guests and so, he decided to switch it up. He began experimenting with all manner of bar tools, teaching himself how to frisbee toss bar napkins and catch a flying cocktail tin behind his head. In fact it was John Bandy who taught the actors the only great contributor to flair bartending in history, the film Cocktail. Molecular Era 2010. Molecular mixology brings science to the shaker to create new flavors, textures, surprising presentations and enhance the overall drinking experience. Bartenders and chefs leading the molecular mixology movement have created incredible cocktails and drinking experiences. Cocktail spheres that explode in the mouth, cocktail caviar, edible cocktails, multicolor layered cocktails, cocktails that resemble lava lamps, cocktails with foams and bubbles, cocktails infused with surprising leather and cigar flavors, powdered cocktails, cocktails with suspended elements, cocktail gums, paper cocktails, solid cocktails, cocktails marmellows, flavored ice spheres, frozen nitro cocktails, cocktails popsicles, cocktail glasses filled with with cotton candy and much more. The creativity and imagination of these mixologists is endless. Revival of Classics 2010 -2018. Mixed spirits drinks have been far from on trend for a few decades. These days however the comeback OT the cocktail is complete. The revival of the classic cocktails be great bartenders, made, delivered and communicated properly, and discovery by consumers, means we are in the exciting period of classic cocktails along with molecular cocktails creating a new trends in the industry. The modern age cocktails have become very progressive by using technology in cocktails. 
The Rotovap, sous vide or egg clarifications are the new age trends to take the experience of cocktail making to next level. Thanks for watching, hit the like button.